of disease when we talk about myeloma. So MGUS stands for monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance. In this, the patient does not have any symptoms, meaning our CRAP criteria is negative, and they have a very small amount of protein called the M spike in their blood. And if you do a bone marrow biopsy, their percentage of plasma cells is less than 10%. MGUS is really not considered a cancer, but it is sometimes called as a pre-malignant state because some people with MGUS will eventually develop cancers such as multiple myeloma, some forms of lymphoma, and even amyloidosis. The risk of progression is considered to be 1% per each year per person. The next phase is called smoldering myeloma. And in this phase, the patient has much more of abnormal proteins in their blood or their urine. When you do a bone marrow biopsy, they have a higher percentage of plasma cells in their bone marrow, anywhere from 10%, but less than 60%. But the patient remains completely asymptomatic. They do not have symptoms of high calcium, low hemoglobin, kidney failure, or bone lesions at all. When the patient has any of these active symptoms of CRAB symptoms, that is considered to be diagnostic of multiple myeloma when it is paired with an abnormal protein in the blood and when there is a higher than 10 percentage of plasma cells in the bone marrow. Now, these are not values that any, as a patient or as a caregiver, you need to memorize. These are guidelines that we follow by, but this is just to give you a general idea of how we go about classifying whether someone has active myeloma needing treatment or if they are in an MGUS or a smoldering myeloma state needing active monitoring. There are other symptoms that we often associate with multiple myeloma, including frequent infections, hyperviscosity, meaning the blood can get really thick and cause symptoms like blurry vision, um, headache, nausea, vomiting, et cetera, peripheral neuropathy, and also coagulopathy, meaning you know, there's a higher chance of having blood clots in the system. Monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, and the MGUS I was alluding to, while I did say it's not pre-malignant, there is a way that we are now looking at MGUS a little bit differently in the sense that if there is a different type of heavy chain, like an IgA, if there is a higher amount of protein in the blood, if the free light chain ratio is very high, these are all adverse markers that indicate that the patient could be at a much higher than normal chance of progressing to multiple myeloma. Similarly, for smoldering multiple myeloma, smoldering multiple myeloma again, the patient is completely asymptomatic, but we have modern studies have now come up with risk stratifications through which we try to assess whether a patient falls into four categories. The four categories are shown in these plots that you can see here in the purple line, the green line, the blue line, and the red line, which are the high risk, intermediate risk, low, and the very low risk categories. And these categories, again, help us as physicians to determine what is the risk that a patient has of progressing at the two-year time point and how often to monitor them in clinic. And if we think that they're at an extremely high risk, should we consider starting treatment early? Um, there is, again, with as with all cancers, there's a staging system that we often adhere to. The staging system considers some blood tests called beta-2 microglobulin, albumin, LDH, and also cytogenetics. And cytogenetics are the way we look at chromosomes when we do a bone marrow biopsy. So there are all these certain characteristics which together give us an idea whether a patient is at a stage one, which is considered a low risk stage, stage two, or stage three. Again, these are clinical parameters that we look in clinic to identify who are the patients at risk, not something that patients need to completely um, focus on. Mm -hmm.